Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways live stream. And today I've got a bit, well, hopefully a lot of model railway inspiration for you. Industrial railways have been around for over 200 years now. In fact, they are one of the main reasons railways came into existence in the first place. And it's never been a better time to create one of these scenes in double O gauge. So I thought I'd show you some of the items that are available, whether you're modeling industrial railways in the steam era or the modern era, covering some of the different supporting items too, such as building kits and the various rolling stock that's available. If you do have any particular questions, please do ask them in the chat and I'll answer them throughout the stream. Otherwise, hopefully I'll give you a bit of inspiration. I'll be showing you some great archive photos too and giving you some reasons and answers as to how you can fit one of these layouts into your home. So, as we mentioned towards the start of the stream, industrial railways really were the birth of the railway system itself, mainly designed to carry goods between different industries, hence the name. So you have a lot of independent little systems that operate in certain areas. Some of the most well-known ones will be working in collieries, shipping coal from the mine shafts to the loading docks where it goes for onward transfer. You have dockyards too, where railways are used to help unload ships and then again get the goods off them and put them to a better place so they can be transported around the country. You have other various factories too, which are also shipping the goods onto different areas. It really is about making the shipping of goods completely streamlined, as economic and as friendly as possible. So although passenger railways really came into the fore in the 1820s and 1830s, it was industrial railways that really were the birth of the UK railway scene. And by the start of the 20th century, you had huge amounts of these networks all across the UK. Some of them actually got quite big. A lot of people think of industrial railways being very small, little compact networks. You look at an example here at Haydock in northwest England. This was a line that served a steel mill, I believe. And this had its own locomotive sheds and its own full locomotive fleet. And this was common with the industrial railways of the time. They were actually their own little railway networks. Some, in, some of them building their own locomotives even, and certainly having quite impressive sheds compared to the mainline railways of the time. So if you do want a layout that's got a little bit of a different theme, but you still want a really large shed and a lot of locomotives inside it, you can achieve that with industrial railways. What I like about industrial railways, well, one of the many things I like about industrial railways, is the sheer variety in locomotives and liveries and how long they survive too. If you're modelling the mainline railway scene in the UK, you're no doubt familiar with some of the basic history that happens there. You've got the grouping in 1923, where the big four come together. You've got British railways from the late 1940s, diesels taking over in the 1960s, and so on and so forth. With these independent little industrial railways, history changes a little bit, and a lot of them do go their own way. There were some industrial railways operating electric locomotives in the early 1900s up in the northeast, so you can have the forerunners of electric traction on your layout if you're modelling the pre-grouping scene. But at the other end of the spectrum, you've got steam lasting far, far longer than it did in mainline service, right up into the early 1980s at places such as collieries in South Wales, as you see here, the southwest of England, and of course, the northwest of England too. And some of these are with really old designs as well, locomotives that had been working since the 1920s and the 1930s. So if you are modeling the BR blue diesel scene and you do like steam engines, but you've not really got an excuse for one, why not put a colliery exchange siding on the edge of your layout or as the focal point in your layout? And you can certainly have some of those locomotives, including the austerity type that we see here, used across Britain from the 1940s into the 1980s. And this is at, I think this is at Mountain Ash in South Wales. So it's definitely one of those South Wales collieries anyway. And they were operated by the National Coal Board at the time. So by the 60s and the 70s, the steam was still present on industrial railways, but it mainly was on the colliery lines. But that's not to say that industrial locomotives were out of use elsewhere. A large fleet of diesels came into use. 
many privately owned. And some of them, again, quite modern shunting designs, as we see here. This is a Thomas Hill design locomotive. And these were used across the various different railways. Again, performing many duties that they had done over the years. There's, I could sit here for hours and tell you about the different types of industrial railways. But again, with those I've mentioned, there's also steel mills, factories, you name it. If you need something moving around a site, an industrial railway is the way to do it. But we've only really seen some small trains at the moment. We've only seen trains of short length. And don't let that fool you. Although a small length train is fantastic to fit in a micro layout, you could have a small diorama easily within a four foot space, such as one of our precision baseboards coming through. You can get a lot longer trains in industrial railways too. This particular image is in South Wales, and this is a purpose-built brush bagnall locomotive with quite a long rake of four-wheel open wagons there. So this loco looks quite similar to some of those that were used on the mainline railway network. So don't let it fool you that it's only small locomotives that work on the industrial railway scene. It certainly isn't. There's some large locos for you there too. But one of the main reasons to look at it is for the smaller size as well. We can see here some of the four-wheel rolling stock of various different types that you have here. The small locomotives coming from our Andrew Barclay through to the Oxford Rail Janus and the Hornby Ruston, which can fit in the palm of my hand, as you can see, an absolutely impeccable feat of engineering that. But if you have only got a small amount of space, but you still want the effect of a full railway, you really can pick up industrial modeling, a couple of wagons, that's just under two feet there for a loco and four wagons that you can see. And you can have some great fun shunting or building up a diorama too. And do take a little bit of a look as well, because it's not just gritty collieries, although gritty collieries are absolutely fantastic to model. As you see here, you've got the track almost buried in some of the coal slurry that's come away. You've got a lot of grime and dirt there. And if you fancy picking up some weathering skills, there isn't really a better place to start than looking at industrial modeling. You can absolutely fill this with details. It oozes atmosphere here. But at some of the other sets too, you've got it running along the back of a line of terrace houses here. Let's have a look at some of the others that we have. Again, this is in Port Talbot Steelworks. So you've got a huge steelworks background behind the locos there too. So there's some great opportunities here and some fantastic comments in the chat too. So Flying Scott, you've asked a great one of what if you want a bit of both? What if you want industrial and main line? Now, there's two fantastic answers for you, depending on what area you wish to model. If you're modeling the steam era, what you generally find is these independent railways, especially at collieries, would have what's called an exchange sidings. So they'd bring their wagons up to the end of their network, which would join on to the national railway network, whether it was one of the big four railway companies or British Rail itself, and then a British Rail mainline locomotive would take away that freight that they had brought up. So you are exchanging the goods from the industrial railway onto the mainline network that goes through. So a really great opportunity there to have that alongside a mainline on your layout and bring in both the industrial locomotives and some of the steam or diesel locos that you have in your fleet. And again, Thomas, great question there too. There's a huge amount of industrial locomotives in preservation. And whilst it's not quite what we're covering on today's video, do take a look at this because with the loco surviving a lot later than the specific items in the British Railways fleet, a lot more of these were able to be preserved. And with them being small and designed to be as economic to run as possible, a huge amount of these engines are in use across the preserved railways in England. So you can see a lot of the industrial designs, such as the Peckets here, the Andrew Barclays have quite a few represented in preservation. And indeed, if you check out the models in the description, there are models both for their industrial service and their preserved life of those models too. So some really great opportunities here to model this. And also another great opportunity, first radius curves. We often look away from first radius curves a little bit because our large mainline Pacific locomotives or great big diesels might not get around them. But with short wheelbases, short wagons, 
you're going to have a lot more fun with first radius curves. And you did find that type curves and point work were a real thing when it came to industrial railways. Cramming in as much as possible in a small space really is a great idea. So again, even if you didn't have much space for a layout at home, you could really put in a huge amount there on an industrial model railway. And you can bring this right up to the 21st century too. You can cover pretty much everything. Although the steam went by the late 1980s, private sidings are still in operation, in some cases with ex-British rail locomotives in there. So I've got a representation here. This is the Helgen 07 with a single cargo wagon, maybe shunting a private factory siding or working on a dockyard to load certain trains in. This is still something that can be seen today on the network with privately owned shunters working on some of those industrial lines. And you'll notice here as well that this cargo wagon, hope that helps you, Doug got the answer for you there. This is a pretty long wagon. It's almost as long as the four wagons in front of it. And these, again, would come off the main railway network and be shunted into those private sidings on those industrial railways. So if you have got some big wagons and big rolling stock on your layout and in your collection already, you're already halfway to getting a small industrial diorama set up. And this is the beauty of it, Liam. If you did want to model a smaller industrial scene, it's really not that much to get started. You can have a single board or a double board, as you see here. You don't quite need so much track, but there's a huge amount of rolling stock available. We haven't even really looked at the wagons, but there are so many out there. I think I counted over 250 that are appropriate for industrial modelers at the moment. And again, so many different types. I'll just hide that so you can see the wagons in front of me. We've got the rectangular tank tar wagon. We've got the corn products tank wagon here, open plank wagons and flat wagons too. So whatever type of wagon you are a fan of, you can get these onto your layout. And these start at a really great price too. You do get a lot of detail in these. They're absolutely fantastic to fill with your own load. So do check out our wagon load video on our channel for information on adding coal or sand or other loads to these vehicles. But these start at just under £10. So you can start building up a great wagon fleet for a really cheap price too. And the locomotives at the moment, at the time of recording this video, we've got the Janus diesel shunter on offer at 49 50 and then the prices do go up from there, but you're still paying a lot less than you would for the larger mainline locomotives and coaches. So it's a great way to do some budget modeling too. You can have a really nice small diorama or scene, but do bear in mind that if you wanted to go the other way, you could make a huge sprawling site as you see here with this austerity locomotive, or as we saw previously with the Bagnall diesel shunter at the Port Talbot Steelworks there. So some great opportunities for either a small or a big layout and do check out some of the track plan books as they do have information on a lot of the industrial railways. But I know that some of you still like your mainline locomotives. The industrial locos have a lot of character. They all look quite independent and distinct. They have a great different variation of color schemes. Just showing you some examples. These are our double O gauge Andrew Barclays and you can pretty much have every colour you want there, really. There's a lot of different variations for a lot of different industries. We have locos that worked at gas depots, petroleum depots, and others besides. Moving over to the Oxford Rail Janus we previously mentioned. These are available in a lot of different liveries. This is the ICI, Industrial Chemical Incorporated livery. And they also worked for British Petro Petroleum, get me words out, and also the Port of London Chorus Steel and other locations too. So pretty much anywhere really, whatever type of industry you're a fan of is coverable. But as we mentioned, mainline locomotives, some of you have to have them. You've got to have your Great Western Loco, your British Rail Diesel, and that's not a problem. A lot of these locomotives, when they went out of service with the main railways, were sold into private industrial use. We see here a former Great Western Railway pannier tank in use at a colliery in South Wales in the 1970s. So again, outlasting steam on the British Railway Network. We mentioned previously the Class 07 shunter. There's also a lot of Class 08 shunters that have gone into private ownership. 
for use on industrial complexes too. So if you are still a fan of your mainline and British Rail locomotives, it's absolutely no issue to include one of those on your layer. Thomas, yes, I'll just show you that picture again. The wartime austerity locos were heavily used by the National Coal Board, and these were brought in in the 1940s. But also check out some of the other images too, because even in the 60s, 70s, and the 1980s, some really old classic locomotives were in use across the industrial railway scene. So it's great to get some of those more old fashioned locomotives, such as the Andrew Barclay, or indeed the small Ruston 48DS diesels onto your layout and alongside more modern units. You can run steam alongside some of the very early locomotives. And indeed there are pictures out there of steam locomotives on industrial exchange sidings with high speed trains next to them. So a real juxtaposition, but they are just some of the reasons you could look at modeling industrial railways. And there's been no better time to do it. Every single item that I have here in front of me right now is available to order on our website. So check out that link in the description. And this is a very small selection. There's even more types of locomotive, different wagons for different duties. I've only got one here, but there's a huge range of buildings and kits out there if you want to build up a steelworks or a warehouse or a colliery or anything along that sort. There's some great inspiration from some of the modelers' guides that we sell too, so take a look at those. I've also put them in the links in the descriptions for you. But it really doesn't hurt to take a look at some of the inspiration that's out there too, from the various photos out there online or some of the preserved railways across England that do reenact the industrial railway scene, such as the Tanfield Railway and the Foxfield Railway that are still running these locomotives in their industrial guises and replicating some of the wagons and trains that they haul too. So, I hope I've given you a bit of inspiration. There's a lot more to it than this, and I really encourage you to either look around the web, have a look in some books, or indeed check out that link in the description for more information on the models that we have available right now. If you have any specific questions regarding micro layouts or industrial layouts, please do put them in the comments or get in touch with our customer experience team who would be more than happy to help you. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like this video on YouTube and subscribe to the channel and also like our Facebook page for more great videos like this, including model railway overviews, real railway inspiration and our skills cast sessions also. Otherwise, I'll let you have one last look through those images and I'll see you next time. Take care.